dog fight. Cat fight. Everybody, anybody ever been in a cat fight? They're bad. Uh, <laughs> my name is Sarah. Sarah B. Odom. I like to put the B in my name because my dad gave me that B. It stands for Bennett, my maiden name. And that's really about the only thing he gave me, which is before I was even five years old, my dad was dead and I didn't know him. So I don't have a lot to know about my dad, but I do know that he gave me that. I grew up in a very poor area. Uh, I, my dad did not graduate from high school. My mom graduated, but she didn't get to go to college. I was the first child in the family on either side to go to college. And you know how I got to go? We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have any money. My scores on my ACT. Anybody ever heard about the ACT before? No? Well, to get into college, most universities will ask you to take the ACT to see how well you're going to perform. And if you score high enough, a lot of colleges will pay for you to go there. You know how you can get really great on the ACT? Practicing. And what you all have been doing with the formatives, and when you take your ISAT, that's helping you get prepared for college or career. And you may say, well, Miss Sarah, I'm not going to college. How many of you are going to college right now? Thank you. Good. Don't do like I did. I didn't go to college right out of high school. I stayed out for two years. Uh, actually, it was a bit longer than that. I stayed out for about four years before I decided to go back. And luckily for me, my score was high enough to school. My university still paid for me to come there for the first two years. So I didn't have to have a lot of expense. My mom couldn't have afforded to have sent me. I would have been another child that didn't get to go to college if I had not worked really hard. And as a result, I went to college, and I went some more, and I went some more, and I went some more. And you know why I wanted to write this up here? Not to let you know how many degrees I have, but to let you know how many degrees you have. Just like me. A little girl that lives in a cow field still lives in a cow field. So don't underestimate what you can do right here at Sando One. Now, Miss Kelly's going to help me. We're going to show you some of your scores very quickly. Ms. Kelly, you're going to navigate for me. And I want you to see what we saw when we looked at your scores. And let's, can you see it? Is it hard to see? Can I see? Can you see okay? What, uh, front front lights off. Closer. Would that help or not? It might help if we crank the front lights off. Ms. Kelly, if you will click on that big tab that says test code reports. And sometimes they do move over this direction to see. Yeah, and you're welcome to move. You want to move very quickly? Yes, yes ma'am. And then the, the little word analysis right down at the next level, all the way over to the left. Now, you all took a test recently for Miss Kelly. And I want to see how well you did on it. So, Miss Kelly, if you'll click on this assessment analysis tab and then pick what class we're looking at right now. And if you'll just hit submit. And then if you'll hit view report on that test that they took, the, the blue all the way to the left. That is the left, isn't it? I'm, yes. I'm all backwards now. Y'all need to help me out. Okay, we're going to wait for it to come up. How well do you think you did on the test? What do you think? Did you make an A? You don't know? Well, let's scroll down and look. These are all the standards that Miss Kelly tested you on. There were like seven standards that she tested to see if you were able to, to answer the questions. And you know what? What do you think about those bars? You think that looks pretty good? I mean, the highest you can get is up here. What do you all think? What do you think about the scores? Pretty good? Are there any, are there any that need help? This one and this one. Oh, sorry. Um, why, why do you think you may have struggled on a couple of them? Do you all remember the test? Don't remember it? 
good. So let's, Ms. Kelly, if you'll scroll back up at the top. So we see, we see we need to look at a couple things. And then if you'll hit the little assessment word, the, the one that, I mean, not the analysis word, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. We're going to go to class performance, which is the first bullet here in the middle. And then if you'll pick this class again and hit submit. And then view report. And then hit submit again right here. We want to look at their distribution of grades. How many of you think you did well? Let's look at this distribution. She's gonna she's gonna make wait a minute. Oh, where oh, there we, we go. go. Okay. Okay. Looking. Look at this. Now here's a hundred. On the far left is a zero. So do we think we did pretty good? Actually, what I like to see, I like to see this in a J, and I don't know if it'll write up here or not, but I like to see a J in color. I want to see almost everybody make an A, and maybe there's a student struggling that will make a B or a, or a high C, but I don't like to see anything else blue on that, that chart. And so in the next test, when I look at your frequency distributions, do you think you all can help me with that? Right? None of us want to look like that, do we? Because you know what? Miss Kelly can print this out and she can compare it to Mr. Jet's class or to another class, and we don't want their bars looking better than ours, right? No. So we know we need to work a little. Miss Kelly, if you'll go right back up to the top again, and we're going to see what might have gave us a little. Oh. Sorry, I, I got this. Yes, it's <laughs> We're going to see what may give us a little bit of trouble. I think there's a smart board marker up in the corner. Boy, you guys are smart. It's the smart board marker is the issue, yeah. Once you, oh, no. In the right slot. There they can tell you. Yeah, get it right. And now do I need to, yeah. There we go. Sorry. Okay. We'll scroll all the way up to the top part. And now if we'll change this frequency distribution to say standards mastery. Okay, students, these are going to show us some really pretty colors, but we don't want to see red. You know what red means? Red means you didn't master that standard. So on this first standard here, you had five questions, six questions. Yes, six questions on citing evidence. Has Ms. Kelly talked to you all about citing evidence? In this room. What does it mean when she tells you you've got to cite evidence? What about inferences? Has she talked to you about inferences? So we see on this 63% if we round of our students, 10 of you knew how to do that well. But 6 of you are still struggling. So now Ms. Kelly can take this information and she can look at what questions. And Ms. Kelly, if you'll just click on one of those questions, the numbers. Up here. Ms. Kelly can look and see which question gave you problems. So here's the story about Buddy, not Bud, not Buddy. And if we scroll down to the bottom, here's the question. How do the kids feel about the social worker coming down the line? Do you think that's an inference or a sight? Probably an inference. Why? What is it? What word gives that away to you? Yes, ma'am. Feeling. Good job, Miss Kelly. You have taught them well. And so we know that it's probably not going to tell us the answer because it's a feeling word. We're probably going to have to find and see if we can find a clue. That's kind of hard, isn't it? See if you get the answers in the, in the story. So when you see questions like this, you know you're going to have to think just a little bit harder. It's going, to not, it's going to be a little more painful. Your brain might get a cramp in it, right? You ever had a brain cramp? Well, that means you haven't been thinking enough. You haven't had at least one brain cramp a day, right? Okay, so, Ms. Kelly, if you'll close out that little, that little uh, deal here and continue to scroll. We know we had a little bit of trouble with some of our students here. The next one is well, we can just stop on 
beginning of a big fine. Determining meanings of words, new words. You had three <coughs> questions, and Ms. Kelly, um, they didn't master this one very well, so let's look at one of those words. I want to know why this word bothers you. In the passage, the word depression means. Okay, let's go back up in here. It says there's a depression going on all over this country. People can't find jobs. Does that mean they're unhappy? Is that the problem? No, it's not that they're unhappy. Does that mean that they're sick? No, that's not depression here either. Does that mean that they're sad? No. What is when they can't find a job? What is that? What happened? They have a bad economy. Look at that word. And maybe economic. Did economic mess you up? If you think you missed it, did economic mess you up? Is that the word that messed you all up? Maybe. So knowing those extra words, so that might be a word that you want to add to your vocabulary because you know what? You know how many words you need to have in your working vocabulary to be a, a good reader? How many words? Yes. A lot. <laughs> Quantify that for me in a number. What does a lot mean to you in a number? Just guess. Nobody else knows the answer. Thousand. Thousand? Yeah. Quantify that because you're getting close. It is in the thousands. Now quantify it one more time for me. Ten thousand? You're, you're in the right. It's in the tens of thousands, but it's not just one ten. It's more than that. How many tens? A little bit lower. Fifty thousand words in your working vocabulary. Okay, so what I want you to do for the rest of the class crew is get a sheet of paper and start writing. Fifty thousand. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> So, but, but you see that these words that we don't know, they can hurt us. So what we need to do is every time we see a new word, you need to add it to your vocabulary and make a mental note. What does economic mean? It has something to do with money. It has something to do with jobs. It has something to do with finances. I need to remember that. So, Ms. Kelly, if you'll close that one out, and we'll look at one more bubble, and then I will let you all go, and you can ask her all the questions you want to after I leave for your test. Go down one more um, Textual evidence citing it in science and technology text. That's the one that hurt us. Remember, if we look back, remember that bar that was low. So, Ms. Kelly, if you'll just open one of those questions for me. Space probe. What was well, hurt about this passage? I don't understand. Space is exciting. It's hard. Word. I see a lot of numbers. It's hard for your mind to process numbers. You ever tried to type a bunch of numbers? I hated that in typing. Every time they give me a passage with a bunch of numbers in it, it just drives me insane because you got to go, you got to rethink it. The same thing with this passage. It's got a lot of words that you don't understand. It's got a lot of. Is it even exciting? Is anybody having a love story in this passage? No. Is anybody playing sports in this passage? No. It's not something you like to read. So how do you learn and train yourself to read things you don't like? We all have to do it. Try to make it interesting. For me, I have to chunk it down. I don't look at that big whole thing and think, oh, no, I've got to read the whole thing. I just take it one little sentence at a time. And I read my questions first, and then I go look for answers. So sometimes you just do that. You don't have to read every word word. Sometimes, sometimes you read the passage all the way through. By the time you get through it, you're too tired to go look for the answers. So look at, if it's a boring passage, look at the questions first. See what they're asking you to find. And then go back and start. And, you'll, and it, it gets more interesting because now you're looking for something. How many of you like Sun Tai Chi or uh, what's that thing that people do? Uh, treasure hunt. What's it called? Yeah, yeah. Passion. Scavenger. Scavenger hunt. That's what I'm looking for. What was you saying? Geocaching? <laughs> Geocaching? I have a GPS to go find something. I haven't done that. Cool. Hmm. I'll have to try that one. So, which of the following supports this, the idea that space probes are beneficial? We would have to read the information. All, while all of these things might be true, which one likely supports that it's important. It's probably 
not when it was launched. That's not really that. That doesn't tell that it's important, does it? Uh, do you think it would really be that it's, they've been to numerous planets? I mean, does that support how it's beneficial? Maybe, but we'll, you know, maybe not. Uh, it's, it's their initial tense fail. That doesn't support that it's beneficial. That supports that it's maybe not beneficial, right? So, but the information that they get about weather, soil, and conditions, now that could be useful information, <coughs> right? So C was the most probable answer. If you'll close out of that, Ms. Kelly, what I want you all to do for me on the next assessment is I want you to try really hard on these technical science passages to not make them so boring. Read your questions first. Ask Ms. Kelly to help you with big words. And let's see if we can make a J out of our data. How's that? Everybody, we're going to do a J, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to see a J when I look at your data, right? Mm -hmm. Now look, I promise. It's been a pleasure being with you all today to show you just a little bit of what we're doing to help you with your scores because we want you to be the best students in the country, right? Nobody better than you, right here at Sandoval. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you.